And we're back. Another edition of Stripe Show Podcast. I'm your host, Travis Fulton. Stripe Show Podcast brought to you by Encore Golf. Encore designs high-performance golf balls for players of all skill levels and swing speeds. It's a Thursday. Usually, we do instruction on a Thursday. But uh, my favorite event is coming up. It's about a month away. It's called the Ryder Cup. You may have heard of it. It's when the uh, the USA takes on the Europeans every other year. But, of course, we couldn't do it last year because of COVID, so they've pushed it back one year. So it's been three years since the debacle that was back in France when the Europeans took it to the Americans 17 and a half to 10 and a half. But you can recall two years before that, Hazeltine, the United States won. But uh, the Europeans have dominated this, and uh, I want to go all in on this because I think this is a big year. Coach Stricker making some uh, making some calls here to Bryson, to Books, setting the stage uh, for what's going to be the 43rd edition of the Ryder Cup. And help me break it down, a guy that, uh, well, he's called the last three for Golf Channel, familiar face, one of my favorites on the channel. Kurt Byram, thanks for joining me. Good to see you, Travis. Well, give my audience just a feel here to start with what it's like to attend a Ryder Cup. Is it is it a different type of energy than, say, a regular PGA Tour event? Because it certainly feels like it watching it through the TV. I've never been. I think I'm going to go this year. But give us an idea what it's like. Yeah, it's an amazing difference, really. I The first one that I did for Golf Channel was uh, over at Glen Eagles in Scotland, uh, 2014. And I'll never forget, my role was as a hole announcer uh, early on Friday and then early again on Saturday. And so I got my golf cart at like, you know, six o'clock in the morning. I think mm. we were coming on the air at seven o'clock local. And I jumped in my cart driving out and I had to go buy the first tee to get to the hole where my tower was. And literally it was still dark. They had lights on. Um, and there were, Six, seven thousand fans in the stands already. They were singing, they were chanting. Um, I mean, they were fired <laughs> up for that first match to get to the tee, you know, at seven <laughs> o'clock. And they had been there for a while. So, I mean, they were getting there at five o'clock in the morning. They were all going to those stands around the first tee. And that first tee scene is absolutely the most incredible thing to ever see in person because the energy, like you talk about, is is off the charts. People are fired up and um it's it's a special, special event to be at. Well, it's going to be the same way this year. Of course, there's going to be fans there. Not a lot of European fans, though, as many coming over, I would think, uh, with COVID. So this is going to be truly a home course situation um, for the Americans. There's a lot to get to here um, with this first of what is going to be three Ryder Cup podcasts. Uh, next week, we'll come back. We're going to do a little bit more on uh, Wednesday with the United States team. And then we got a, a special one for you on Thursday where we'll look at the European team. And, you know, you set the stage here for the Ryder Cup. It, it's, it's noted that the Americans have struggled. Um, they've lost nine of the last 12, four of the last five. We go to Whistling Straits, a uh, great golf course there in Wisconsin. Captain Steve Stricker, he's got his vice captain, Jim Furyk. And, and Zach Johnson. And we set the stage for what we know right now. Who's on the team? There's one week left to qualify and to get points. This is it, the BMW. The Tour Championship doesn't count. So right now, going into Caves Valley this week, Morikawa's number one, Dustin Johnson's two, Bryson's three, Brooks is four, Justin Thomas is five, and there's Tony Fino after mm. his big win last week. I would think Steve Stricker had a nice glass of red wine after seeing Finau win because you know he wants Finau on this team. As we look at whistling straights, to me, Kurt, it feels like the course setup has got to be similar to what they did at Hazeltine, which is going to be long, which is going to be no rough, mm -hmm. and put the flag relatively in the middle. You know, don't tuck them. And, and let these bombers go get it. You, you think we're going to see something similar to that? I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, most recent history, that's the only time the Americans have really played great. So mm -hmm. um, I was looking at the um, scorecard, though, for Whistling Straits, and 
you know, they're, they're going to be handcuffed a little bit. I mean, there are four par fours that are going to play under 400 yards. And the other side of that, there are four par fours that are going to play 500 yards plus. So, you know, on those shorter holes, there is only so much they can do. Um, and, you know, I think <laughs> I, I kind of like your idea, though, that I, I think the, he'll have to look back and say, OK, why did we play so well? Why did the Americans play so well at Hazeltine? And I think they're going to look at that setup. And I wouldn't be surprised um, if they try to emulate what they did there as far as setup goes. Um, the other thing about the uh, guys that you were talking about that uh, have qualified for the mm-hmm. team, Finau's position is the only one left up for grabs, that sixth position yep. on points. Somebody's going to have to win or play really great right behind him, Shoffley, Spieth, one of those guys. Um, otherwise, he's uh, he's got that last spot. So uh, it is going to be interesting, though, at the BMW this week to see if somebody can – can come out of the blue and win that tournament and pass him. But then I don't think there's any doubt that, that, that he'll pick Finau if, uh, if he's not on on points. Oh yeah. I think Finau's played his way on for sure. Yeah. He's he, and we'll get to the other players because he's got six picks. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's interesting. I went back and was looking um, since 1979. That's when the picks were introduced. Europe, over that time has picked better. U.S. picks have won 40, 46% of their matches, and Europe is 52%. So, well, <laughs> You know, when you look at Europe right now, I, I mean, I don't know how you feel, but I, I feel like Sergio Garcia, Ian Poulter are definite locks, and then mm-hmm. it's kind of, I mean, I would be surprised if he didn't give that third pick to Justin Rose, but... I think that, you know, we've still got a ways to go here. They're going to play the BMW um, over there in England before they announce their picks. So yeah. there's one more tournament for them to make a, you know, make a move. But uh, those three guys with the experience they have, I can't see them not making the team. Yeah, I mean, they've been incredible right? Ryder Cup players. I mean, Ian Poulter's name and face is, is absolutely implanted <laughs> into the entire um you know, event that is the Ryder Cup. So yeah. you know he's going to be there. I think Rose will be the interesting one. It's weird to think Justin Rose didn't make the FedEx Cup playoffs, didn't mm-hmm. get inside the 125. It doesn't even make sense when you say that. Yeah. Um, but then you have Robert McIntyre, who's kind of their long hitter, this type of course setup. I mean, Rose is not short, but a McIntyre certainly could lend himself his game, really talented lefty, can hit it a long ways um, to this type of course. But yeah, I think the course setup is always a fascinating one. And, you know, it's interesting. The strokes gain statistic is such a good one. I mean, it's such a great one to look at off the tee, approach around the green, putting, approach wedge play. Like, you can really parse it down and see where these players excel against their peers, right? Because we all know they're great players. But then when you say strokes gain, he lost four. I mean, that's a big stat when it comes to that particular, you know, part of the game in relationship to to the field. So it's interesting to see if, how much Stricker's looking at that because I would think strokes gain off the tee, strokes gain approach. I mean, those are, those are two big ones, you know, when you start looking at, when you start playing golf courses that are really lengthened out. And then, of course, mm-hmm. you know, you've got to make some putts as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but... You know, if you're sitting here and you're scrambling around the greens in four ball, like, you know, like, like that doesn't like you're going to lose, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter. So it's to me off the tee and approach, like, let's get some distance. Let's get good iron players. Let's set the course up like that. This mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense to me. It does. The, the hard part, I think, is, you know, who Stricker pairs guys together? Who, who's going to be partners in this stuff? Mm-hmm. Um you know, I, I'm hearing more and more that, you know, you try to pair in the four in the foursomes, in the alternate shot format, guys that play similar styles of game. Mm-hmm. You know, let's say a couple of guys that are fairly accurate off the tee, uh, good iron players, good putters. You know, you try to pair those kind of guys together um, in four ball in in the best ball format. Then, you know, maybe you you put a bomber with a great putter. Um 
So, uh, you know, there's just so many scenarios there. Um, you know, and the Americans ha haven't gotten it right other than a couple times in the last 10, 15 years. So, um, you know, it's, it's just really interesting, the dynamic in there and how they're going to pair guys together. Um, I mean, you, you look at a guy like Colin Morikawa, I'm sure every player on that team would like to play with him. He just, <laughs> he doesn't make mistakes. He drives it long enough. Yeah. He's really accurate. He's the best iron player in the game right now. Mm -hmm. um, and he's starting to putt a lot better than he yeah. used to. So he's easy. You can put him with anybody. So, yeah. um, but a guy like Bryson, you know, he's got that, that personality that he has and, and Brooks and uh, Brooks, I don't think is tough to pair with anybody because he's just going to go out there. He's going to give you your best stuff. He's a bulldog and he's going to go after whoever Bryson, you know, it's uh, the whole, he's pretty emotional, all, you know, all the things yeah. that we've seen. So it's going to be really interesting. Yeah. I think let's talk about that because you, let's start with Colin. This will be his first Ryder cup. And I think Morikawa makes, in my opinion, a lot of sense in the alternate shot um, because he's just so steady, you yeah. know, and he's going to put you in play his short game can get a little iffy at times, but let's face it. Colin Morikawa is, is a complete player. His putting to your point has gotten better. I like Morikawa <laughs> in an alternate shot setting with perhaps a Jordan Spieth who I think will be on the team and we'll get to that. But with Spieth's short game where I think that has more value, you know, in the alternate shot in putting, timeliness i you know to me that makes sense now dj on the other hand has struggled with alternate shot he's one and three uh yeah. in his Ryder cup experiences but he's three and one or excuse me he's three and five in four ball and he's three and one in singles dj makes sense to me more in the best ball setting um sorry i'm going best ball alternate shot that just registers better with my yeah. brain than four ball and foursome but to me, DJ makes a little more sense, perhaps, with Bryson in a four-ball setting. I don't like Bryson paired up. I just don't. I don't like Bryson paired up with someone else. Yeah, it's interesting. I think Morikawa will play all five matches. Okay. I think he'll be in every session. Mm -hmm. At his age, the quality of golf that he's shown lately, the big moments that he's yep. handled so well. He's going to, I think he'll play all five matches unless he comes in there and absolutely somehow doesn't have it. And Stricker says, or, or even more cow goes to him and says, look, I'm not playing that well, but I don't see that happening. I see him playing every match. Um, yeah. I mean, again, do you, you know, do you put a couple of long hitters like Dustin Johnson and Bryson DeChambeau together um, and try to pair them up and see if they get off to a good start and get going, and, and then you keep them together the rest of the way. Um, it, it'll be really interesting. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, in the end, sometimes uh, these captains like to pair guys together that are our friends too. Yeah. Um, Justin Thomas and, and I think what would Tiger, I believe, played together over in France, you know, and they're good buddies. Um, so, uh, you know, it's. <laughs> It, you can go a million different ways. Here, <laughs> yeah, you could, right, Travis? I mean, I like uh, you know. Here, here's the other. Here's the other team that I like. I like Kepka and Finau together. Um, I like Finau, and they played together um, before in France. And Finau was one of the bright spots. Yeah. I like Tony Finau with a partner, where Tony Finau can just let it loose. Yeah, because we know when Tony's relaxed and playing like. The guy can go, and and he he falls out of bed, makes birdies. Um, I like Kepka and Finau together when it comes to the foursomes, and then you know that leaves JT, who I think, you know, we were talking before we got on. JT's only played five matches in the Ryder Cup, and he's four and one. I, I think JT could play all five too. I, I really do. I, I think I, he's the other. No one. doubt. Yeah. No doubt. He'll play all five. He's yeah. He's raring to go, and I think he'll play all five. I mean, you know, we haven't talked about the guys that are going to be on the team that are going to be selections, picks right. by Stricker. But right. there's a lot of possibilities with the six guys that are already in on points with the next six guys that are going to get selected. So there's a lot of good options there as well. I think, um, yeah, I, I feel like Justin Thomas could play with anybody, but I do like that pairing of he and Brooks. You know, they know each other really well. 
they live down there near each other. So they're friends. Um, Tony Finau, everybody likes him. He's one of the most popular players on tour. So, uh, you know, that's going to be easy, I think, especially if he continues to play well. You know, sometimes in my mind, the only question is we're still just under a month out from the first match. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, <laughs> anything could happen to a guy's game between yeah. now and then three weeks, right. you know, three and a half weeks from now. So I, who I knows? Think, I think Morikawa is going to play with either Justin Thomas or Spieth in alternate shot. I, I think that's where they, I think that's where you, I mean, cause Morikawa and Thomas are similar, right? You know, they, Thomas is a little bit longer off the tee, but they're, they're, mm -hmm. they, they might be one and one a, the best iron players in the game. I mean, John Rom's going to have something to say about that too, but, um, and Russell Henley, but he's not part of this equation. So I like, I like those three in the mix. It, I think Cantley, which we'll get to here in a bit, can factor into that kind of game, alternate shot mentality, not a lot of weaknesses, you know, um, mm -hmm. not emotional, you know, kind of just, I, I, to me, makes a lot of sense from an alternate shot standpoint. I think yeah. Bryson is, is one that they're going to have to have a lot of conversations with because who he, he, he's going to have to play with somebody. And I think an alternate shot with the emotional aspects of things, and I just it seems risky. Now, apparently, Coach Stricker has had a firm conversation with both of them, DeChambeau and Kepka, mm. sidebars, and has laid the groundwork. They've both assured him, yep, you know, there are going to be no issues about the team. I want to see him hug it out right out of the gate. Like, I mean, you want to, I mean, here you go, Kurt. You want to bring the team together and get people fired up. Those two guys, right? And they should stage it. They should get out there, play a practice round, and hug it out, and everybody would just go berserk. Let's go. I like how you're laughing while you're saying that because you know that is not going to happen. <laughs> as much as you'd like to see it, that's not going to happen. They're, they're not going to hug it out. But that being said, they're going to have no trouble, I, I, in my opinion, putting whatever yeah. their problems are aside for four days, five days together, um, in the team room, whatever. It's not like they have to sit at the same table and hang out. They're going to have their wives there, their girlfriends there, or whatever. Um, you know, and there's going to be other people in the team room. They, they, and it's, you know, the, the bottom line is they're there to win matches and mm -hmm. win points. And that's all they have to keep in mind and forget all the, the crap that they've had going on now for the last year and play their best golf. I think a lot of the pairings and a lot of this stuff also, you know, it'll depend. I mean, you know, you're going to be able to watch these guys play practice rounds. You're going to know how they played leading up to that, uh, to the matches. Um, so you're going to have a good idea how well, like a guy like Bryson's playing. Yeah. Once you see him play a couple practice rounds, you're talking to him all the time. You're talking to all the guys on, yeah. on the team the whole time. So you're going to have a good feel for where their confidence level is at. If Bryson's on his game, I could see him playing all five matches. When he's on, I mean, he... He can overpower a golf course. Uh, he's become a great putter. Um, yeah. You know, it's just, it's the emotional aspect. It's the mental side of it with him. And and if he's playing well and he's confident and he's feeling really good, I, I see him playing a lot. Yeah, it'll be interesting, Brian. He hasn't, you know, he's yet to win a match yet in the Ryder Cup. So he's, he is 0-3. Dustin, 11 matches, 7-9. and nine, Or no, wait, uh, 16 matches, 7-9. and nine. Kepka is four and four. I mentioned JT four and one. Finau two and one, as he played last year and was a bright spot. Made a hundred birdies. It felt like uh, in in the two days that he played. That was a big win for Finau. I, I, I really, I mean, I was happy to see that for multiple reasons. But Stricker just had to be super excited when he when he put that way and and moved up to number six. All right, so he's got six picks. This is where it gets a little bit more difficult now. All right, so let me start with this. I'll just ask you the question. I Do you think Xander is in at seven? Absolutely. Yeah. Without a doubt. Spieth is in at eight. Yep. And there might be, you know, they, there might be a little jarring here, you know, if Xander bumps to six and feel like, I think we're. Yeah. So but Spieth is, is in at eight. The thing is, Spieth, 
I, and the 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 seventy nine that he shot at Northern Trust <laughs> yeah. on Sunday, I'm just calling that a weird off yeah. the chart one day. You know, it, it doesn't bother me. I mean, he's he's going to be on that team. Oh, yeah, no doubt sure. about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And he's. <clears throat> he's got the, all the tools we know. The driver can get a little clunky, we know, but it's better. Iron game's back. I love the finesse and the short game and the creative. The round, I mean, we know around the green, on the green. Man, alternate shot it just makes so much sense um, for Jordan Spieth. Harris is in at nine. What do you think? I think he's in pretty good shape. I actually, yeah. he's he's been consistently good. Um you know, I, I hated to see, you know, the Sunday round for him at uh, the World Golf Championship in Memphis. Um, but I think he's pretty solidly in. It's the next guy down right now that that I have some, you know, there has to be some doubts now around Patrick Reed just because of, well, a couple of reasons. He's He's got pneumonia right now, for one thing. He just pulled out of BMW. He's had an ankle problem. That's what pulled he pulled out of Northern Trust. So to me, Reed is the guy on there right now that Stricker's got to be wondering where he's going to be physically. Yeah, um, oh, totally. Right? I mean, yeah, I mean, I, bilateral pneumonia, that's serious stuff. He's going to come out right. of there. I mean, I'm sure he's going to lose a lot of weight and he's going to, it's going to take him a while just to get back to feeling himself and, swinging and you know we're a month away but Still. that's a huge question mark i think before all that where things were going i think reed was in i do too um there's a lot of people that don't feel like that he was that he was going to be in but i i just feel like he was going to be um and you know back to harris i think harris would be a really good alternate shot player too i really do I think, I think, he's someone I think he will at. be too. I think he's, uh, you know, he's going to be a rookie. This will be his first right. Ryder Cup. That's the only question mark. But I think the way he plays mm -hmm. um, will not be a problem. I think he's fairly right. consistent. In his, he's gotten his swing back to where he wants it. He's been consistent all year. He's played a lot of great golf. Uh, he deserves to be in that nine spot right now. And I think, um, you know, I, I definitely think he'll be a pick. Um. Oh yeah, I, I do too. I think Harris is in. He's won twice. Yeah. You know, he really doesn't have a weakness. I mean, I don't think Harris gets enough credit for just how good of a player he is. Um, you know, his statistics, I was looking at them, they've they've dropped a little as far as strokes gain off the tee and approach. But his his short game is great and his putting's great. I mean, Harris is a great putter, keep in mind. You know, he's he he does everything pretty darn well. Yeah. And I think the other part of that to me is the mental side of it. You know, he was basically rock bottom two years ago. Mm -hmm. Like he had lost his card. He was going to be off the tour and, you know, uh, Justin Parsons down there at sea Island yep. got with him and started putting things back together with Harris and got him comfortable again. And since then he's been awesome. So, um, yeah, I like Harris a lot right now. And I think that, being so far down and then having the the mental strength to come out of the depths of where he was, um, I think that bodes well for him. I could see Harris playing with JT. Similar. <clears throat> you know, both, you know, Harris is 300 off the tee. They're about solid iron game. I would think their game is similar distance-wise. JT maybe just a few yards past him off the tee, but not much. Um I think and, JT's, uh, I'm just looking JT's, at him right now. And Harris right now, strokes gain putting is 11th. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> Around the green, 28th. Yeah. Approach, he's he's dipped to 84. He was higher than that. Um, so he's in the upper third on tour. I I, I like Harris. I, I don't think he gets quite the credit, but I, you know, look, hey, with the Justin Thomas, a couple um, SEC guys, you know. Yeah. Yeah, let's uh, let's let's go. All right. So Reed is a question mark. And then let's see here. My scroller. There we go. Number 11 is Cantley. That's an interesting one to me. I can't wrap my mind around my arms completely around that one. I know what Cantley's capable of. I feel like I I want him on the team. 
you know, and, and, but I find myself going to now some hypotheticals here this week where, okay, if Webb Simpson wins, mm. if Scotty Scheffler wins, mm. we got problems. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I like can't lay a lot. I, you do? I think he's, he's really, I don't understand the sort of the inconsistent golf occasionally, although, right. you know, he's, uh, I, but he is really tough mentally. Uh, I think he'd be really good on the team. Um, he, um, he's a bulldog, man. He, he, you know, he doesn't give up. He'd be, I don't know. He plays a lot of good golf with a couple of wins too. Yep. Um, it'd be, I think it'd be hard to leave him off the team, especially if he does anything this week at the BMW. I think you, that's a thing. I think you, you, I, I put quite a bit of stock in guys that have been playing well leading up to it. I think yep. that has quite a bit of bearing on that. I agree. Um, and I think that's where Cantley's got, I think that's where Cantley's got the advantage here because his bad golf was in April. Yeah. He's you know, been playing he missed, okay here lately. Yeah. He missed four straight cuts and then yeah. he won the Memorial. He missed the cut at the open. That's kind of the inconsistency that you're talking about. Yeah. He didn't want to see that, but he played pretty good at the Northern trust last week. And, and he really, his iron game was, was okay. I think his, um, you know, he kind of lost his putter mm -hmm. and then it came back. And then I think his iron game was okay. And perhaps, but I, it feels like he's kind of trending again. Can't lay with a good week this week plays himself onto the, onto the, onto the team for sure. Unless I think the, I tell you, you know, I don't think Stricker's saying this in, unless he wants them on the team. But if Webb, Scheffler, Horschel, Kokrak, Burns, or Kisner, or Mickelson win this week, it just throws a whole wrench in everything. Yeah, like it just makes everything sure. that much more complicated. Well, that and the tour championship, you know. Well, the tour don't count. It's just this week. Only on points, but the selections come after the tour championship. That's true. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, right. So. You know, you still have, I still think there's room or time yeah. to see some guys playing well, trending that way that are outside the points right now. I think Fair enough. <clears throat> even a guy like Daniel Berger, you know, Berger has two top tens in a row at BMW and tour championship. How do you leave him off the team? <laughs> okay. Well, let's, let's do this. <clears throat> I think you can only go down to 19. I, I, Kevin Nas 20. I don't think. I don't think Nas is going to play his way on this team. I just don't. I, I just, I think it's going to be too big of a ballpark. Yep. Um, if Mickelson wins, he's got to get a move on to get to the tour championship. But if he wins one of these last two, let's just say, do you think he's in? Yeah, I think if he wins for sure. But okay. even Phil has said that he has to do more here. Yeah. Even though he won the PGA, he he needs to do more for Stricker to look at him as a pick. Yeah. So he even he took the pressure that. off Stricker. That was smart. He, yeah. That was a buddy doing a buddy a solid. Yeah. Webb Simpson. Because <laughs> he's though, true. It's accurate. It's it's one hundred percent accurate. Yeah. I mean, and and you know that was kind of out of the blue. Phil had not played well, and then right. He did what he does. You know that's why he's got what forty six wins now or whatever mm -hmm. he has and all the major championships. So. um yeah, I mean, if he wins, he'll get a spot. And if he wins one of these next two, but he's got to play well at BMW to even get to the Tour Championship. So he pretty much has to win BMW uh, to get a pick. Um, some interesting characters on there, though. Sam there is. Burns is a heck of a player. Kokrak has two wins this year. Kokrak's become a really good putter. Very um, good. We knew, you know, we knew how, how good he was from tee to green. Um, Scheffler... Hardly takes, he hardly has a week where he doesn't play well. I mean, last week was kind of his worst finish in a while. He's He's been consistently good. Webb Simpson, I mean, he's got some experience there. Um, he's become a much better putter than he was four or five years ago, three or four years ago. Um, and he's going to hit it straight. You know, if you're looking for a guy in alternate shots, it's going to keep you in the hole off the tee. He'd be, uh, he'd be pretty darn good. So, <laughs> yeah. That's a good point on um, on Scheffler. You know, he's he's a great driver. He's kind of like a John Rom close type of driver of the ball. Not that good, but you know, he he he's does keep good. it in front of him. His putter can get a little, you know, he can get a little chilly around the greens. But 
um, he does keep it in front of him. Um, certainly. And he's consistent, you know, he doesn't have those, mm -hmm. those peaks and valleys like you, like you see with a, with a Phil Mickelson. Um, but I think, you know, if Reed was healthy, then I think you're really looking at assuming Cantley is going to be in. And I think Cantley's in. I do. I think he's, I think Cantley's in. Let's, let's, let's say Cantley's in. And you're if saying Reed was healthy. And, I think you're yeah. vying for one spot. Now with yeah. Reed out, I think you're, you, you're real. We're really talking about two spots now. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree that, uh, I read the real up in the air thing for me. I mean, if he's healthy, I would have said for sure he was going to get one of those picks. Yep. He's not that far out on points. You know, he had played, he, you know, he's 10th in points right now and he hasn't played. Um, he didn't play last week. So um, I would have said, yeah, probably down through those first five right on points. And then there's one spot available. But if Reed doesn't recover, quickly um well in the next couple of weeks if he doesn't show good signs of recovery and he gets his strength back and he's you know stricker's gonna be i'm sure calling him uh, you know every other day to find out how he's doing is he is he going to be able to to play golf and and you know walk and play a couple matches in one day that kind of thing so he's a real wild card right now for me i think it opens the door for <clears throat> a win from these guys that we're talking about um, to enter in. I really do. I, I think it, 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 there's two opportunities now to, to play your way in where I think before it was just one. Um, but it, it, you know, reads, unfortunately his health has, uh, has opened the door uh, to do that. I took a beating in social media on saying, look, I don't think Kisner is the right pick. I have nothing against Kisner and I know he won. I just don't think he's the right skill set for the what they're after here. Unfortunately, with the rest of the players that are on the team and the way they're going to set the course up, um, and he's even admitted himself playing long courses is is a disadvantage for him. Like he does, he's not even going to go play them, you know, because he doesn't have a chance to win. And when he does, it's like you know, top twenty pays a lot. You know that quote, funny quote he said. Um, but if he wins. I think the guy that wins that puts the biggest wrench in this thing is Kisner because then you got yourself a dilemma because you got a guy mm. that you're going to ask to play a golf course that is, is not going to be set up for his doing, you know, well, 7,600 yards said whatever. I mean, it's going to be, they're going to trust me. They're going to peek it out if as they, much as they can. I think, I think he's, you could say the same thing about Kokrak. I mean, he, if, if Kokrak won BMW, or he plays he great. I mean, he's got the game. He's there's yeah. no question about that. And if he's playing that well, this close to the Ryder Cup matches, then you know, I don't know how you don't pick him. So I, I think there's, you know, that would be because, what three wins in yeah, three wins a, in the in the season, a calendar. Yeah, uh, uh, you know the wraparound. one win one win. Yeah, in the wraparound because yeah. one of those was um, the CJ Cup CJ in Las Cup. Vegas last fall. So, but still, um, he's played. I, but I agree with you. I think you know any of these guys really that are outside of outside of the top eleven, they're in points. If any of them win, I mean, they're they're going to throw a wrench into things. Um, Listen to these stats. I mean, the, <laughs> the only the thing with Kokrak is he, you know, his short game is can get weird. Like he hits a lot of like, where'd that come from? You know, around the greens and, but strokes in off the tee, he's 22nd on tour. He drives it great. Approach, he's 64th strokes game putting. He's eighth. I mean, if you're looking for a guy who drives it well and puts it well, he's hard. He's not a bad iron player, right? He's hard. To, he's hard to overlook. I, I mean, um, when he's going well, obviously he's got a ton of confidence in himself. And with those two wins in his back pocket, he, if he does something, you know, I think, you know, he's yeah. going to make it hard on Stricker to overlook him. If he wins for sure, he's going to make it hard on Stricker. See, um, I think, I think, I think, so I think if Kokrak wins, it's like, I think he's in, I mean, yeah. you know, I think this close to the cup. Yeah. I think it's like, look, he, he's got one of the spots. Yeah. I don't think Daniel Berger wants 
Daniel Berger can't have Webb, Scotty, Billy, Jason, Sam, or Kisner win. Or Phil. Yeah. No, he no, he I, can't have yeah. one of those guys win because yeah. he's in the 12 spot right now. And, and even there, he's 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 probably a little nervous at this point. I think Cantley slightly nervous at 11, but I think Berger is nervous. I, I think he's got to feel like I've got to play well here, obviously. Um, no, I agree. I agree with you. But if Webb wins, got, that's not good for me. He's out. Yeah, exactly. Or even even potentially if Webb were to to play really well the last two weeks, if assuming he's at the Tour Championship and he plays well both at BMW and Tour Championship, now you've got a guy who may not make it on points, but he's playing really well and he has some experience. So it, it I think it'd be hard to overlook Webb. Um. Yeah, you know, it, 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 I think it would be too, and I think. I think I think Kisner's one, Webb is two. That makes Stricker's life really difficult. If if either one of them wins, I, those are the two that I think. And then Horschel pro- could be in that scenario as well because it'd be his second win. Those are the three probably. That jeez, gosh, now what do I do? You know, like you know, yeah. I've got, you know, these three. When I I really would like, I would think, I would think, if I was Webb, if I was Stricker, what I would want to have happen is I would want Sam Burns to win because I'm a Burns guy. I think Sam Burns is the real deal. Oh, man. There's no doubt. Yeah, I think he's the real deal. I I think it's time. See, for me, in my mind, like, and this is probably just some emotion talking here too, but I'm ready. Like, Phil's had his chance, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Phil's had his chance. I've, I've watched Phil. I love Phil. Webb's had his chance, you know? Um, I want Burns to play his way on. I want Shuffler to play his way on. I- I'm ready to flip the switch. I'm ready for a young group to say, you know what, guys? I haven't I haven't lost any Ryder Cups. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those guys have. I know we haven't been doing very good then, but this is – I got no scar tissue. I'm okay yeah. with that, too. I'm yeah. not against some young guys uh, being on the team, whether they make it by points or whether they get selected. You know, and it makes me wonder if you, and I know you've looked probably back through the history of this and the players and their records in the Ryder Cup. I mean, it's, uh, how do you explain, like, yeah. like Curtis Strange has a losing record in the Ryder Cup matches. Yeah. So does Raymond Floyd. But Lanny Watkins and Hale Irwin have two of the best records in the history of the U.S. Ryder Cup team. So right. how do you explain that? Curtis Strange is tough as nails. He, yeah, they no. don't get any tougher than that. And Ray Floyd is right there with him. And Ray Floyd was one of the great pressure putters of all time. How does Ray Floyd not have a winning record in the Ryder Cup? Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. you can hash this stuff out, and, yeah. and it still is hard to explain sometimes. You know, Ben Crenshaw might be one. He potentially the greatest putter that, mm-hmm. that ever laced up a pair of spikes, and he's got a losing record in the Ryder Cup. So I just, it's really hard to. Yeah, the competition's to, stout. <laughs> That's what I mean, say. you know, the Europeans <laughs> yeah. are good. Yeah. They're good, and they are really good in those formats. That's, they play that kind of golf in their junior golf. They play all this match yeah. play kind of stuff all the time. So they're really keyed into it. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, you know, that's where I think, like, this younger turning the page a little bit here and and letting some – couple guys come in here that it, to start building their own legacy with this because I, I know to me Phil Phil hasn't played his way on the team and, and yeah. Webb has not had a good year with injury he gets one win okay now he's played you know okay I get all that and it's going to make the decision tough but I'd love to see and this would if I was the captain again I'd love to see Burns just Continue to thrive forward. He played well last week. I mean, you look at Burns, like 52nd off the tee, 17th in approach, and 15th in putting. I mean, the yeah, guy he's he's a stud. He's a stud. No doubt. And it wouldn't bother he, me. He's if, got some if, dog in him. It'd be it'd be it would kind of shock the world if it, let's say nothing changes after BMW and Stricker went, okay, I'm taking Sam Burns, Jason Kokrak, and Scotty Shuffler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that, that would, would be that would shake things up a little. Oh bit. my goodness! Well, I mean, okay, 
All right. So let's say right now that would be my picks would be. I mean, you know, we got English in at nine reads out. Let's say. I, I think I would go. I think what I would do is I I I would go Burns can't I would go Burns. Can't lay. And she's I you know I would right now. I would give it to Burger. Interesting. I would give it to Burger. That would be my three picks in addition to English and Xander and, and Spieth. Spieth. Yep. So Xander, Jordan Spieth, Harris English, those three are a lock for you. Yep. Yep. Cantley would, Burger Burns. Yeah, I'd go Cantley for sure. Um I good think question. Burger, good question. I would love to see one, either Kokrak or Burns yeah. get a pick, but they're both going to have to play lights yeah, out they, these yeah. next couple of weeks to do it. So, yeah, um, I think that's their only chance. But if they do, I think I think either one of those guys would be a great pick. You know, the um, thing that you can't measure is is like like the competitive spirit that you know the the match play mentality. Kisner clearly has some of it. Uh, he's been very good at match play and I think deserves a look. And I think mm -hmm. it's his game. Um, he's never played in the president's cup or in the Ryder cup. He's played in the president's cup and did well. Mm -hmm. um, but this isn't, you know, this isn't the Austin country club either. Right. Mm -hmm. So this isn't right. set up at 7,100 with the match play of an entire field in mind. This is going to be, really lenient we're talking about an additional 550 yards probably 600 is what we're talking about here potentially yeah. potentially yep and it's going to be cold it could be yeah i mean it, it could be perfect but it it, it could yeah i mean you're right on the water there you could get some wind and it could be chilly there's no doubt about that wisconsin in september um yeah, so I think I'm just kind of, you know, to me, the model and strokes gain with this, I'm just like, I need, I need to be able to get it out there off the tee with some relative length and accuracy. And, and I need good iron players. And then I'm going to set the greens up and such that I have some putters and let's, let's, well, let's if go. You're going to go middle of the green with the whole locations. Pretty close. You, better have, you better have some good putters because they're going to have a lot of good looks if yeah. they set it up that way. Burns is a good putter. Yeah. He Burns is not a good putter. Burns is a great putter. He doesn't do anything poorly. <laughs> he's like I, it's funny. You start sharing stats with people, and I do this once in a while. It's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna read you this line. Tell me who it is. And they're like, um, Justin Thomas? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's Sam Burns. <laughs> yeah. That's Jason Kokrak. That's You're right. That's Harris. I mean, Harris there for a while. His stats were were just silly. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was inside the top 35 and everything. I mean, he wasn't doing anything. I mean, he's just like elite, 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 elite. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's fascinating. Of course, you know, these are our picks now, but everything could change here this week as it did last week. But I think it changed for the good last week. I think that was that was needed. And we'll finish with this. I mean, what's that win going to do for Fino, you think? I mean, is he... It's easy to say, I oh, wins now. He's going to win. You know, it's, we know it's hard to win, but just when you have that kind of gear, like when you can send it like he can, mm -hmm. and you can hit four irons in the air, two hundred and fifteen, twenty yards, and have them come down soft, two feet, like you know, like you can do things a lot of people can't. It was all situational. I mean, Finau is a better putter than he ever has been. He, his his stats have improved. Boyd's done a really good job with them, and I think, and I've talked to Boyd about this. He's just like, look, he just got to do it. Period. You know, and the, he did thing, it. the thing, the difference though, for me, and I think for a lot of people that follow this week in and week out, was in the past when Finau would put himself in a position to win like that, he wouldn't make that putt on 18. Right. To get into the, you know, to get himself into the playoff. He would miss that six, seven, eight footer. Or or two or three of those mm -hmm. on the back nine, and that's why he couldn't get over that hump again, and that's what really held him back. If now he has become a better putter, which it looks like he has been, yeah, I think so. And, and he's made him under pressure on Sunday. They ought to have a strokes gain stat. I'm serious about this one. They they, should, they need a strokes gain stat for all of these different uh, categories. 
when you start Sundays within three shots of the lead, who are the leaders in all those strokes gain stat categories? I, I because, think it's in the works. Because that is going to tell you who can handle the pressure and yep. whose game rises instead of collapses on Sundays. And then the stats will mean something to me beyond just – Overall, after a year, you get a good idea of what people are doing because of their stats or how, yep. why they're playing well, why they're playing poorly. But I would love to see just a Sunday stat, players that start Sunday within three shots of the lead, now show me the stro- strokes game because that would really make a difference for me. That'd be fun. That, yeah. that, that would be fun. Yeah, he would, he would just fumble <clears throat> it away. Like, he, I just go back to, what, the Genesis, and he had that – I don't want to say vanilla chip, but you know, I mean, for these guys, like little chip up the hill in the playoff, make the putty wins. Homo was behind the tree, yeah. hits it on the top side, eight feet, not even close. You go back to waste management when Webb caught him. He didn't birdie, you know, Kurt. He didn't birdie. He didn't birdie any of the last four holes, which is probably the easiest stretch down the stretch on tour. You know, the par five, lots of opportunities. That's yeah, tons sure. of them, and he didn't make, he yeah. didn't make one birdie. And he's got. Wedge or nine iron on 16, he can drive 17, 18. He was flipping wedges in there because yep. of where he was driving it. Look, but I, I will say this beyond the putting, besides the putting impressively down the stretch, those drivers he was hitting out there oh, yeah. with that cut that he knew he could aim down that left side and count on that driver hitting that little cut back into the fairway, by the way, going 320. I mean, that is a huge weapon. So if that putting is coming around and it looks like it may be, I mean, he's got everything to really open the floodgates now and win a couple times a year at the minimum. I'll I'll say this in closing for Finau. I think in a weird way, Bryson's um, effect on distance and what he's done to his swing has helped Finau because I think since that time, Finau's swing has lengthened out. I didn't see any reason why Tony Finau wouldn't have at least picked some weeks out based on the golf courses where he just turns it loose. Because, I mean, you've seen yeah. the videos. He can, he's he's, he's 80%ing crazy. it out there. Oh, no. One out driver after another. If he ever turned it loose like Bryson does, mm-hmm. he would be hitting it where Bryson is and maybe even further without even lifting a weight. You know his, what I mean? His swing looks a little longer. His swing, to me, looks like it has lengthened out some. Yeah, you know, he got really short there. And I think under the gun, Kurt, just that's tough. You know, you can get, you know, he'll hit that hard pull like he does. And it just looks longer to me. And I think that'll bode well for him lengthened out wise. That'll bode well for him under the gun. I just think that's a good thing. And I, so I think in a weird way, Bryson's helped him. I know Boyd has encouraged him. Tony, mm-hmm. you're accurate. Like, like, yeah. Let's go. Like, yeah. And I think he has. And I can see it. And I think it's helped him right through the bag, um, every club in his bag, and doing it under the gun. So, um, But, yeah, I think if Tony wanted to be the longest on tour, he would be. I think he could, too. I mean, yeah. and we've seen the videos where he goes, you know, to parallel or slightly past with the oh, driver so. and really winds it up. And, I mean, it's just – it's crazy. Have I mean, you it's... seen Wilco Ninabar hit it yet, Kurt, from Europe? The... Uh, Ninabar? Or Ninabra, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I have a video of his swing. I'll send Make it to you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, uh, we stood behind him. Uh, Trevor Immelman and I uh, were tooling around the golf course at Torrey Pines during the U.S. Open. And um, he said, let's go watch Ninabra hit it. So we went over to number nine, which is a par five straight away, slightly into the breeze. And so we got behind him and said, okay, we want to see the, the full bore shot here, like the full driver, don't hold back. And he goes, okay. And so he gets up and just unleashes a, a, this unbelievable rocket down there with a little cut. So we drove ahead and went down there, and we found the pitch mark in the fairway, and it had flown 319 into a slight breeze. So, wow. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't even look like he's swinging. No. It looks it's like weird. there's more there. I know. It's weird. Like you bought, you're like, wait, but that just went 330 in the air. I know. It's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. Length's a, length's a good thing, as we oh, know. Yeah. I mean, you just, if you don't have it, you, you got to play perfect golf like Kisner did at Wyndham if you're going to win. It's just, or you yep. got to be on the right golf course. But over a year's period of time, that kind of length is just an asset that is incredible. That's why I mean Kisner's so impressive. That's why that's why Kevin Na 
is to yeah. me is one of the most impressive players on the planet. I agree with you. I mean, he when he gets on a venue that he knows is good for him, mm-hmm. like Colonial, where he yeah. won two years ago. Sony. He's fired up, and he knows his game fits those golf courses, and that's yeah. what those, those shorter hitters have to do. They have to take advantage of those kind of golf courses that they know they can that have a chance to win on. But then, but then to be in the top 30, knowing that you have to play all the other ones. Yeah. To be yeah. in the top 30 on the PGA Tour, hitting it at the distance Kevin Na does is, is one of the most impressive things, I think, in, in the game. Mental toughness. He doesn't, <laughs> really he, you know what I mean? He doesn't yeah. let that bother him. He plays his game. He knows he's a great wedge player, a great putter. Mm-hmm. And so he just doesn't let the bombers, the Bryson DeChambeau's and the Dustin Johnson's don't intimidate him. I mean, yeah, right. Because they're hitting it 70 yards past him every single time. Yeah, it's maybe crazy. not quite that far, but at times, at 50, times. 50, no problem. 50 for sure. Yeah. I mean, they cut the corner on, and they take it over the trees. It's 80. Yeah. 